Welcome back everybody to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This is number 10 and we're going to do while loops. The format of a while loop is extremely simple. It's while something run this code block. And similar to an if or a switch, that something needs to be a boolean or a boolean expression. So while some condition is true, we're going to do this. And that while means until it's not true. So if this is true, we're going to run it over and over and over again. That's what we call an infinite loop because the loop can never exit. So if we had something here, we would never reach that point because our loop would just stay in our loop. And that's not what we want to happen right now. So we could set condition equals false in our loop. And what would happen is it would say while condition, which is true. We enter our loop block, then it would run this line of code, reassigning our condition to false. It would come back up here to loop again, and then it would say while condition, which has been set to false, but then it would not be true. So it would jump all the way out here and we would hit here. Like so. So now that you know how the while loop works, let's put it to some actual use. So up here, let's ask the user for some input. Let's say, are you sure? Enter yes or no. So we want the user to enter yes or no. And then let's get the input from the user. Now, what we want to see is if the input is yes or if the input is no then we have some valid input if we don't have valid input then we will say invalid input try again so now we're, we're trying to get yes or no from the user. We're getting their input and we're checking to see if it's valid. If it's not valid, we're going to print invalid input. Try again. We have done this sort of thing in the past few tutorials, except for the try again part. And that's where our loop comes in. So down here at our condition, let's say bool has valid input. And that's going to start off being false because we don't have any input yet. So has valid input is not true. And in our while, what we're going to say is while has valid input. However, this will never run because if we get here and it says while has valid input, it's going to say, oh, it's false. So we're never going to enter this loop block. So what we need is our logical operator not. So while we don't have valid input, we are going to do all of this. So cop cut all of that out and paste it in there. We can get rid of this. Let's comment this out. So now we're going to say, do we have valid input? And that's no, because we don't have any input. Then we're going to say, while we don't have valid input, we're going to say the question and the prompt. We're going to get the input. We're going to validate it. And then if it's invalid, we're going to ask them to try again. So what we need to do is if the input is valid here, then what we need to do is we need to change our condition to has valid input equals true. Now, if we have invalid input, we don't need to do anything because this needs to stay false so that we stay in our while loop until we get valid input. So let's see that in action. It's going to come up. Are you sure? Yes or no? Blah. Invalid input, try again. Are you sure? Yes or no? Over and over and over and over until we have valid input. And then we go down to our next line. 
and we're done. Now let's take this even one step further because we have our loop and it's working and we're validating our input, but we're not doing anything with it. We're just writing that it's valid or invalid. And once we get out of our loop, we're not doing anything. So let's do something. So say we have valid input and that's great. But we, but we also want to know, is the user sure? We're going to start that off as false. Then we're going to say, okay, we're asking them if they're sure, we're getting their input, we're making sure it's valid. Well, if it is valid, well, let's not print valid input anymore. Let's take that out. Let's just say, if our input is yes, we're going to do one thing. Otherwise, it's going to be no, because this block says it's going to be either yes or no. So we know it's one of the two. So if it's yes, we're going to do this. If it's no, we're going to do this. So let's just set, is the user sure? So yes would be true, the user is sure. And no would be false. So now... By the time we get out of our loop, we will have this Boolean set because if the user gave us valid input, depending on what it was, we can see the answer in this variable. And if the user hasn't given valid input, we're going to stay in our loop until they give us valid input. So down here, let's say right line is the user sure. So let's run this. Are you sure? Yes or no. So if we don't put anything, we're going to get invalid input. Try again. If we put yes, we're going to get true. So now we have our variable at the end of our loop that we can do something with. And that leads to a very important note about scope. You've heard me talk about scope. And by scope, I mean code brace blocks. So all of this is a scope of this while loop. Anything in here will execute during the while loop. Anything in this curly block will execute in main. So the while loop is in the same scope as this variable. So this variable is in the same scope as this print. If we declared this variable in the while loop like that, now we have problems because this variable only exists in this scope. Now, all of a sudden, it does not exist in the current context, so we can't use it. So when this while loop exits, this variable doesn't exist anymore. So what we set is just thrown away. So we have to make sure we declare the variable out here, and then we are still in the main scope in the while, so we can set it, but then once we exit this scope, for example, our input will be gone, this variable gone, but this variable still exists, so we can use it down here. If what I just said doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it just yet, because scope can get very complicated, and we're going to go over many, many examples, and I promise soon enough it will be second nature to you how it works. Now that we have a working while loop, Let's make this into a little bit more of a real life example before we wrap up. So we've asked, are you sure? And we've gotten our valid input and we've printed it. But let's say that the user triggered a delete. They've pushed a button. They've typed in something that says, I want to delete something. So we are going to prompt them. Are you sure you want to delete? Enter yes or no. So we've already got the answer down here. So maybe we say, if the user is sure, else. And now here we would perform a delete. And then here we would do nothing. And now that we know specifics about what we're doing, we should update our Boolean to be a better named Boolean so our program is easier to read. So what you can do is right click the is the user sure variable. Go to rename and you'll see it'll highlight all the uses usages of it and then you can say something like can delete and then push apply 
so now we're saying can delete is false and this whole part here is getting the user's response to whether they are positive that they want to delete now by the time we get out of the loop we know if we can delete we're going to run some code that deletes something otherwise we're not going to do anything because the user said no they, they changed their mind they don't want to delete that wraps up while loops next up we are going to do for loops they are very similar but have some different uses thank you for watching everybody i do appreciate you happy coding and until next time as always take care <laughs>